Prophet Edward, D David O'War, Dr. David O'War, as he's known, is one of those people who you cannot meet on the street and not look at him twice because he does stand out, but also because he's a man of God, he's a prophet, he says he's got prophecies for this country. Please, let's welcome Dr. O'War. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you, Larry, for having me on. We have an election coming up. And the last time we had an election, we didn't have a very pleasant outcome. What's going on in your mind about two weeks to the election? Uh, thank you, Larry. Uh, what an important time to have this kind of conversation. Uh, the Lord spoke with me, that was April of 2011, and he showed me a tremendous vision of what is coming at the election. And I saw quite a bit of tempest and running and burning, Kenya literally burning. And then I called a big meeting of pastors, you know, a lot of pastors up to 1,000, and passed the message. But most recently, again, he revisited this conversation with me as we draw closer, where, again, I saw a lot of running, and this time gunfire involved a disputation in election. And so right now, that is what has prompted us, actually. It prompted me to call for a National Day of Peace, Reconciliation, and Repentance, a National Day of Repentance, uh, in which all tribes, all communities can gather to Hurupa grounds and reconcile. And they're coming with white handkerchiefs, you know. And uh, I don't know how many million people will come here. Yes. But for now, what we are hearing, the mobilization across the entire country, it's going to be very massive. We've never had such a meeting here. Kenyans saying, we want peace. But the highlight of it is going to be uh, when all the eight presidential candidates will be able now to come forward and make a public declaration of peace, that they commit to peace and peaceful election and transition. So that's what's coming up on the 24th of February, based on the conversation the Lord has had with me on the elections. All right, but everywhere you go, you seem to attract such huge crowds. We've got some incredible video of your rallies, wherever they are, and if I can call them rallies, it's obviously very loosely um, based on what a political rally might be. But let's take a look at some of the work that uh, Prophet Uwar has done. So those are the kind of crowds that we see from all your crusades, if you can call them that. Why do people come to you? Thank you so much, Larry. That's a very important question. You know, when the Lord brought me into the spiritual landscape, I found a church, the church that had been compromised. So there was a lot of uh, corruption, as you know, immorality and all these scandals that even have been reported in the media. And so working within that background, it was very, very important, as the Lord had sent me, to articulate the message of righteousness, repentance, and the return to holiness. And then, of course, genuine healings came into the meetings. I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of fake healings that have taken place in this town, commercialized gospel. And so you see that people are genuinely hungry for the truth. They're hungry for righteousness. They, they want to be led, to be directed. I think that's where the church has been missing. And that's why the country also finds itself in this condition right, right. now. You see, when you talk, up the, talk of the condition of the state, the condition of government, the condition of the corporate world, if you talk about corruption and immorality, that essentially is the mirror image of the church. And so that's why, you see, immediately the Lord brought me into the landscape and I began, began to bring this very mighty message of repentance and return to the truth, righteousness. But beyond that, you are, do you have supernatural powers? Here we have weapons getting returned. That, that is essentially the power, the supernatural power of the Lord. In fact, it's, you can say the power of righteousness. I see many times the church is languishing here and there, trying to, whether purchase power, I don't know what they try to do to fake it, but the genuine power lies in holiness and righteousness. And that's why you see the message of repentance as the Lord sent me to preach, I preached repent. And when you repent genuinely, you show fruit of repentance. And so that's why you saw people can do the impossible. I mean, to be caught with a firearm in this country is a serious offense. And they bring weapons. And then the healings also. The do healings. you heal people? I do not heal people. The Lord heals people. 
I'm just a vessel the Lord is using. And most importantly now, of course, recently, you, you saw in the big article that came out in the Nation newspaper, the healing of people that HIV, had HIV AIDS. You know, previously the is church... Is this just a claim because we've known pastors who stage manage these things? Absolutely. That's why it's very important that we share this. You know, in the past, there has been a lot of that. I remember one time I went to preach uh, at the Langata prisons and I met one of the, one of the so-called prophets in prison because of this thing, this issue of HIV AIDS. Right. They, they, there was a lot of money they paid, you know. They, they were paid and they claimed they were healing. But now look at this now. When I realized that HIV AIDS was a serious issue, and the Lord brought it to my attention and asked me to pray for them. The first thing, there were so many, there were like 200,000 people. The first thing uh, the Lord led me to do was to tell them, go back to your own physician that has your file. Right. Tell him to examine you. And now it's so mighty because once that doctor examines, at first, of course, it was a big laughter, you know, and they were thinking it's a joke. But when finally the first cases of HIV turned negative with their own physicians turned up, then now I opened up a big scheme where we don't only take the, the three, the byline, unigold, the determined test, the antibody tests, but now we have to take it up the C, the, the DNA PCR, CDNA PCR level, which is the ultimate uh, testing for, for, for the virus. So people come to you because they've got something to receive. They've, they've got miracles. Well, no. You know, there are a lot of people that just come to worship the Lord because they're looking for a holy place. You know, you said a little message. earlier that you could have met a prophet, quote-unquote, in prison. Yes. What is your own claim to prophethood? Well, I don't claim anything, you know. It is you people to say because, you know, the Bible speaks very clearly about these callings, you know. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, the Lord speaks very, very clearly that when they shall come, you know, there are stripes. But th that is for them to say, you see. And out of, look at the prophecies that have taken place. Look at the Haiti earthquake. When I went on November 20, 22nd, all the 29th, 2009, until it happened, of course, December, uh, January 12th, uh, the, the, the Chile earthquake, the, the, the cases we are having here now of last post-election violence. You remember when I spoke? You know, when I was speaking at first, people were not understanding. Yes. They were thinking, well, I don't think Kenyans can go into refugee camps. You see, in any case, we are hosting refugees. But anyhow, what is coming up most importantly out of all this conversation is that this upcoming election is not well. I've shared this with the principals in this country, and now, you know, that's why we're having the culmination of this meeting. What is your prophecy for this election? How does it end? Well, what happens is that uh, I see a lot of people running after the polls. I see a dispute. I see a contestation, a very bitter contestation. And then I see Kenya burning. Unfortunately, in the conversation the Lord has shown me in this dream, it's worse, a little worse than what we had before. And so it's a lot of movement and people now, most recently, the most recent one, I see a lot of people walking with their children, Mami Tembea, Mami Tembea, Tembea Raka, trying to run. And I see dead bodies at the side of the road. So that is what really prompted me, because I was living for a big meeting in Bujumbura. That's what really prompted me to call for this massive reconciliation that will take place at Uhuru Park. Why do you only prophesy doom and gloom? That, that is a very good question, Larry. Because, you know, when you look at the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 24, the Lord Jesus himself spoke about the times. That's a very critical question, really. He spoke about the events that would happen in this time, in this dispensation. He talk, spoke about the wars. The earthquakes, I prophesied, their biblical basis. In Matthew 24, chapter, verses 7 on. And so he talked about wars coming, earthquakes, you know, and all this disturbance you see. So these are the signs that the Messiah is coming. Behind the scenes, the Lord has actually spoken with me about the coming of the Messiah. And that's why you see so many nations. My program runs in Europe. We are in we are big, we are big TV programs in, in Finland. We are in big TV programs in Norway. We are down in Latin America. We are in Australia. We are everywhere because of this novel message on the coming of the Messiah and the righteousness is propelling. Let's do a simple question. Edward Cavelli Utopia on Twitter asks, can, can you predict the outcome of the elections? You tell us what happens afterwards, but who wins? Well, that is amazing because uh, that is what I will not say on air. Why not? No, but, uh, because if you say such a thing, you know the repercussions of that. So part of the conversation the Lord is having with me also involves a lot of responsibility. Because now I look back, for example, at what happened when he sent, even the first conversation we had about Kenya, you see how much blood flowed. As I said, it would flow refugee camps and cuts of the, cutting parts of human bodies even Haiti. So those have really taught me now to be a little bit more cautious and to essentially bring the underlying message.
that the nation needs to repent, and especially the church. And now we are seeing a big hunger. This has been a storm now. We are seeing the entire nation from Mombasa to Busia to, to Marsabit. Everybody is preparing to come to Urupak. And that can only tell you that Kenyans are passing out one message, that they are tired of war, and this time they are choosing leaders that are pro-peace, that love peace. Answer this for me. To peace. Why do you keep that beard? Well, you know, I also don't know. You know, I just find myself in this situation, Nari. For how long have you had it? These are, I, I can't remember, though. These are some of the things you cannot tell about the calling, Larry. So the beard is here to stay? Well, the Lord has spoken with this land. He has spoken with this land in a very mighty way. And uh, what is going to be important, and again, last time when the Lord spoke, you saw that they handled it recklessly and carelessly. And so you saw the amount of blood that flowed in this land. But this time, I'm just praying that Kenyans will be wise enough to understand that the voice of the Lord is here. And, uh, and, and, and this, is, uh, this is actually uh, affirmed by the healings you see, the HIV AIDS healings. And that's a big thing to say on, on television. Are there any good things going to happen to this country? Well, if the country, first of all, there's a very good thing happening in this country. There's the biggest revival in the history of the church happening. Beyond here. the revival in terms of the growth of the economy, in terms of the leadership moving forward, any other things for national life? It will have to start with the revival. Because the revival is what will birth out. The revival actually will be a revival in the so life. So the good things will only happen to Christians? The, the whole nation needs to obey the voice of the Lord, Larry. Because the Lord is the creator of the entire nation. Everybody else. And so, revival is what will flourish out. Flourish out everything else you look for. Like the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything shall come unto you, shall be added unto you. And so that's why, even in this program, repentance is going to deliver this country. Otherwise, I've seen a tremendous tempest to visit this nation. And I'm hoping we're not going there this time. That's why I'm really involved now. How did a well-respected scientist like you, with a doctorate, end up a preacher? Well, uh, that is a very good question because uh, you know that many times we go into the careers, we pursue the things we do. But eventually, let me tell you, Larry, in the final analysis, we are all created for him by him. So that is now what overrides everything else. And that's why, you see, when the Lord called me and I had to say yes to him. But of course, now you look back and you, you thank him that you obeyed. You see what I'm saying? Because many people have found healing. You've seen the many cripples, uh, many blind. Now HIV, this is breaking news. A lot of media from abroad is coming to record it. They're taking, they're taking the evidence. They're examining these people. You know, it's a big story coming out of Kenya. So this is really a good story for Kenya also. We'll come back to finish up with you in the future and your ministry. But in the Now let's finish up with Prophet Award, who's with us again. Somebody's wondering, why don't you preach about the positive side of Matthew twenty-four fourteen? Well, um, it depends on the calling that you have. You know, right now we are sitting at the brinks of a major visitation in the church and across the nations. And so this is the message right now for this hour. And the Lord is essentially asking nations, and Kenya being a very important nation right now, uh, even in this revival, the Lord is surely asking nations to return to righteousness. And repentance is the only way that will bring righteousness to the church, which is the light of the nation. A lot of people are concerned about this. Dennis Lubanga also says, someone please tell Dr. War to preach peace and not predict chaos and violence always after the elections. Absolutely, yes. You know, this is the message of peace. Because essentially, uh, the message I'm preaching is peace between them and the Lord. There is no peace that surpasses that peace. And when you look at a nation undergoing what she's going through now, you definitely see that Kenya is ailing. And if the nation is ailing like this, she needs help. She needs to be healed. And uh, the controversy on this repentance issue can only be sorted out by the nation indeed repenting. You can understand why there's a lot of skepticism because pol clerics generally are suffering a crisis of confidence from stage managing miracles mm -hmm. to just generally running churches that are businesses. So you fall under that same category of clerics who have been 
found wanting by the Kenyan public. Who is there to say that? And I'm not saying you personally, but I'm saying generally the, the institution yes. you serve is under serious crisis of confidence. Which institution? The, the church. The, the church as a whole, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. In fact, I began by saying so. I began by saying that uh, uh, it's important that the church will return to righteousness at this hour. The reason the church has actually uh, uh, lost a lot of confidence from the public and the nation is because of the practice of the church. You are right by saying that... Uh, the judge, the judge, the jury is actually the public. Because even those who are not, a, not born again, they understand the benchmark of serving the Lord. They understand the standards of salvation. So surely, yes, they are right to be able to point a finger at the church and say that here you have not done this, here you've been found wanting. And the only way the church can restore confidence into the mainstream, into the society, is by the church herself operating above board beyond reproach. And this is the message of repentance, essentially, that should be embraced. How do you make a living? How do you support your church? Do you pay for charge for miracles, or how does this ministry support itself? I, I think that is where the church went wrong by beginning to, 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 to charge to us. And, and first of all, if you charge for a miracle, that's a fake miracle. Because our Lord Jesus did not charge for a miracle. All, most of your viewers know this. The heavy price, the complete price was paid at Calvary. So the apostasy in the church, which was predicted at this hour, is what dictated that those who would not hearken unto righteousness would be able now to try to sell, which is a big problem because the church is supposed to be the business of faith, teaching faith. Just The Lord said, don't carry your bags. Don't carry anything. If you come to serve me, I'll take care of you. And the birds in the sky, they don't have granaries. They don't go digging, plowing to keep this to survive, and yet the Lord feeds them. And so the problem then came in when the church started to earn her own living, not depending on God for a life adventure and all this, you know. All right. We'll leave it there. Very quickly, in 30 seconds or less, look into that camera, and what is your message for Kenyans? Into that camera. Absolutely, Larry. Thank you so much. Well, uh, this is an important nation, Kenya. Right now, we know too well that... Uh, the, the, the writings are on the wall. What is happening may not be very good. They're not good signs. When you see a lot of leaders talking toxic, spe spewing venom. So the only thing that will redeem this nation, not to revisit the 2007 violence, is repentance when this country will eventually turn to the Lord. And that is why now the big meeting has been called. I have called a big meeting for February 24th at Uhuru Park, and that's why you see the entire nation now, even those who are not born again, they are calling and renting right. buses and coming down to Uhuru Park for repentance, Prophet, including the presidential candidates. Prophet Owar, thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Larry. Asante sana. And that's where we'll bring it to a close. Thank you so much for watching.